figure skater Yuzu Ohanyu attracts people not only with his performances on the ice, but also with the power of the words he speaks. The impetus to become consciously careful with words was the Great East Japan earthquake 12 years ago, which struck him in his hometown of Sendai. How does he cope with putting thoughts into words? We asked Yuzu Ohanyu about his journey of searching and current thoughts. You have always been very clear about your goals and words. You also called the challenge of the unprecedented four and a half turn axle your life, and said of the Olympics that it was the place to win. Why do you use such strong words? Strong words are a tool to make your intentions clear. I often get my head in order by talking. By speaking out loud, I become aware of my thoughts. It's a kind of counseling. I have to acknowledge what I didn't want, or say words that project the desire to become this. Of course, there's the pressure of what's said must be done, but that's why I push myself diligently forward. I can support myself with an expression of determination. It becomes a driving force for action. The heartfelt words after the challenge touched fans' hearts more than the result. At last year's Olympics, where you failed to successfully execute a quadruple axle and take a medal, you said, it may have been an effort that didn't pay off, but I gave it my best effort ever. As an athlete, I've had a lot of opportunities to draw attention to my words and speak my mind. It was one of those things that was able to make me feel good, that not only my performance, but my words made me feel like even user Ohanyu is facing something like this. Do you have a word that has always been important to you? I guess it's slash daijobu slash it's okay slash it's okay slash nothing's wrong slash nothing's wrong. It is quite multifaceted. The meaning of this word, said in everyday life, nothing, it's okay is quite different from throwing yourself nothing nothing, it's okay when you are really in pain and you can't do anything. There are times when you need to tell yourself it's okay, even when it's not at all. Perhaps this is a peculiarity of the Japanese, but I want to live my life paying attention to the changes in feelings that are read between the lines and hidden inside, something the Japanese don't show. Your coach said that you have been a child who clearly expresses his intentions since childhood. In junior high school, ages 6 to 12, when I got a program from my coach, I would spell out in words what I wanted to express in it. I liked to create my own stories, I wrote them down on paper or in a notebook. I had a very strong desire to communicate and convey what I wanted to do and what I was thinking about. From an early age did you have many opportunities to speak out? As a child I didn't seem to be much of a talker. I was the kind of person who concentrated on one thing, was in my own world. I read anatomy books and things like that in the school library, so I probably wasn't a person who expresses himself well in words. I guess I wasn't interested in expressing myself that way at the time. What was the impetus for realizing the significance of words? The Great East Japan Earthquake. I myself was a casualty of it in my native Sendai, and I was often asked to give comments. What do I want to convey? What is the best way to get my message across? What is the meaning of my words? What will people think when they hear them? Thinking seriously about it all, I felt the weight of the words. A situation arose in which you had to think about the impact your words might have. I don't think it's worth saying things that might hurt or make someone sad. Basically, I'm writing because I want to make someone happy, that's how I want to live my life. I really care about whether or not I'm hurting someone. Right after you won the gold medal in Sochi in 2014, you were asked about why you weren't smiling, and you said, I don't know what I can do to recover from the disaster. At the end of the day, I felt very strongly that I was only doing what I wanted to do because of the support and strength I received from the people affected by the earthquake and said I'm not the kind of person who's able to give people courage and cheer them up and things like that. Your comment on the 10th anniversary of the earthquake also included, I don't know what's best to say, what's best to convey. Then you also wrote, I am the person most supported by these words, so let me say them, and added, please try. At the time, I was plagued by strong doubts. I really didn't know what best to say. But after, the earthquake, I wondered about the meaning of Hanju Yuzuru. 
I am both a casualty and an athlete. And when I thought about what was expected of me, I decided that I knew better than anyone the meaning of the word try. I came to the conclusion that because I got the word from so many people, I could say it. Twelve years have passed since the Great East Japan earthquake. Have your thoughts and the way you perceive them changed? Basically, the thoughts feel the same. I can't help it or compare it to myself, but I'm someone who lives in the interior, not on the coast. Probably coastal residents say, but we're not Fukushima residents, and Fukushima residents say, we're not I wait coast residents. I think everyone has something they can't say because of the comparison. But it's hard for everyone. Hard, but incomparable to those people. I think that's constant now after 12 years. I've heard directly from people the stories, my house just washed away. When I make comments, when I think about the earthquake, I never forget that there are a lot of people who have it harder than I do. Have you had moments when you were afraid or wanted to stop speaking out? Two or three years after the earthquake, I felt like I couldn't say anything. I was afraid it might be perceived as arrogance, looking down on me, he's from Central, what does he know? Maybe I was overly cautious about everything, but I was very concerned about the reaction on social media. How did you overcome that? I didn't want to lie. Even when I tried to put on a mask, the words that I wanted to say came out on their own. That's when the dialogue with myself started, and gradually the big picture of my thoughts came out. Being honest with yourself is not an easy thing. If you are clear about the course of your thoughts, you can speak the truth. For example, athletes often say, I hope I can perform convincingly, I hope I can show what I've worked hard at in training. But, if you ask whether they really think so, it may well be that they were saying it with a mask over their heart. I feel like I understand my essence, so I can speak without being offensive. What is the best way to create that essence? In a way, in my case, with words. By speaking it out, I gradually become aware of my essence. Don't people have a face and a soul slash mind for every situation? But the basis, something like real feelings in the depths of the soul, doesn't change much. And it's a basis that we don't understand very well. And its understanding comes gradually through talking it through. Little thin roots sprouted from the basis, and by putting different words together, they became thicker and stronger. There are people who don't have many opportunities to speak out. But you can email, you can leave voicemails, you can do social media. Even if you just leave your words out there, I think your foundation will gradually get stronger.